Hello, good morning everyone. I am K. Narsimurthy. Presently, I am working as an assistant professor in Government First Aid Women's College, Tungkor. Uh, I, am I am presenting the 37th video for second semester BSc students of Tumkur University and the subject is Physics. Almost 50% of uh, the videos, 50% of your syllabus has been covered in my 30 videos. The first unit, I covered the entire first unit in 15 videos. Okay. So we have divided a one unit into 15 hours, 15 sessions. Okay, I mean 15 videos. I have covered entire 15 hours and means one unit in the 15 sessions and means in 15 videos. The second unit is again I covered in the another 15 videos. Okay, so totally in the 30 videos it covers almost covers the exactly 50% of your syllabus. Okay, All right. The first 15 videos will pertaining to the vectors and electrostatics. Second 15 videos are regarding the magnetostatics. Now we have understood electrostatics and magnetostatics as well. Now we are in a new chapter here. After discussing the magnetic materials, I have done a 5 hour small chapter in the unit 3. It's a very small chapter. I have finished in the 5 hours. Now we are in absolutely a new chapter which is a Maxwell's equations. Okay, it is electromagnetism. Now I have told you that these electric field and the magnetic field now are they are not treated as two separate quantity. They are the two aspects of the same subject which is called electromagnetism. Okay, because these electric field and magnetic field they coexist they will not exist separately. So if some electromagnetic wave moves means these electric and magnetic fields are mutually perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of any electromagnetic wave. And Maxwell's clearly tells that the velocity of the light is same as the velocity of the electromagnetic wave and light is also an electromagnetic wave. All right. Now these four different laws of electromagnetic magnetism are presented in terms of four different equations. So what are those four laws of electromagnetism? The four different laws of electricity and magnetism are Gauss law, Bayard Savart's law, Faraday's law and the Ampere circuit law. These four laws I have discussed in my previous videos. And these famous laws of electricity and magnetism are presented in terms of very four fundamental equations. And these equations are called as Maxwell's equations. The behavior of electric and magnetic fields are governed by these four set of equations and they are what Maxwell's equations. Okay. Now rather telling these Gauss law, Bayard Savart's law, Faraday's law and Ampere circuit law he simply gave a four set of equations and they are the Maxwell's equations. They enable us to examine the space and time variation of the changing fields. Right. Now today I am going to derive one of the Maxwell equation. There are, I told you there are four Maxwell's equation. I am going to derive the first Maxwell equation which is dive dot D is equal to rho. You need to understand what is D is. D is the displacement vector. D is the displacement vector. Rho is the charge density. Okay. So I am going to derive the first Maxwell's equation which is dive dot D is equal to rho. One thing I would like to tell you students the Maxwell's thermodynamic relation what we discuss in the thermodynamics are entirely different from these four set of Maxwell's equation where we discussed in the electrodynamics chapter. Okay, those are different and the, these four Maxwell's equation are different. They are also called Maxwell's equations but they are the thermodynamic Maxwell's equations and these are the Maxwell's equations which are, which, which are related to electrodynamics. 
don't get confused with those Maxwell's equations and this Maxwell's equations right so these are the Maxwell's equations in electrodynamics electromagnetism you can say all right I'm going to derive the first Maxwell equation which is dive dot D is equal to rho now I have considered a medium a dielectric medium of volume V surrounded by the surface S yes. means surface S yes, enclosing the volume V so I have a volume it, it, it contains a dielectric medium and it's surrounded by a surface S yes. now I have a boundary I have a surface for this volume the surface for this volume is S yes. and this surface will consist of free charges as well as bound charges so it has a free charges also means electrons are the charges here the free electrons and the bound electrons bound charges are polarization charges you can say now we have a free charges and as well as the polarization charges present in our considered dielectric medium if you want to uh, uh, you want to mention the charge density it is rho plus rho b rho b is the bound charge density okay right now I have the Gauss law Gauss law in electrostatics says that the electric flux which is going out of the surface which surface which I've considered surface which is enclosing a volume V the flux which is going out of the surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the charge enclosed in that surface the flux going out the electric lines going out is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by that surface okay so it is surface integral of e dot ds is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the q q is the charge enclosed in that surface s where epsilon naught you know it is the permittivity of free space okay it is a constant it is pertaining to the free space you know what is permittivity is it is the obstruction for the obstruction for the penetration of electric lines of forces okay so if obstruction is more epsilon will be more if obstruction is less for the electric lines then the epsilon will be less but this particular constant is an epsilon naught it is the permittivity of a free space so for a free space the permittivity is a constant value and that is epsilon naught right we'll move on to the second equation i'll take the total charge which is enclosed in that considered surface s yes. q is equal to volume integral of rho dv i have been writing this formula in, in the last equation of continuity in the last video also i have mentioned this charge as volume integral of rho dv student you need to understand the thing here rho is the charge density rho is what the means it's a charge per unit volume per unit volume the charge is rho if you multiply that with the volume dv you will get a small charge dq if you integrate this small charge dq over a volume integral you will get entire charge enclosed in that volume v right that is the same idea we have been using so charge q is the volume integral of rho dv but this particular medium we don't have only free charges we have some other charges which are called bound charges we have polarization charges so therefore now i cannot simply take just rho i have to take a rho b as well now the charge density would be rho plus rho b because rho is the free charge density and rho b is the bound charge density or rho b you can say it is as a polarization charge density okay so that is why for the charge density i have taken it as rho plus rho b it is sum of the charge density of free charge and the bound charge right i got an equation two also now I am substituting this equation to the equation of charge in the equation 1 which is Gauss law. Now our equation 1 becomes surface integral of E dot ds is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the charge I have to substitute there. For the charge I have established a new equation 
which is volume integral of rho plus rho b into dv okay now uh, i have modified this maxwell's equation oh, sorry i have modified the gauss equation so this in the gauss equation i have substituted q q as volume integral of rho plus rho b into dv let us call it as equation number 3 now after getting equation 3 i know that the bound charge rho b bound charge density rho b is equal to minus del dot p divergence of p where p is called electric polarization vector you know what it is electric we have discussed already in the previous video what is actually the electric polarization is okay so that electric polarization means when the absence of field the these electric dipoles are oriented in a random direction when you apply an electric field these dipoles starts orienting in the direction of electric field therefore this polarization this phenomena is called polarization and we have a quantity established here is the electric polarization vector p and this divergence of electric polarization vector is what the charge density of bound charge rho b so rho b is equal to minus divergence of p p is electric polarization vector now it is as good as telling the differential form of gas law okay this rho b is equal to divergence of p is the differential form of the gas law okay let us substitute that in our equation so our equation number 3 becomes surface integral of e dot ds i am not changing the left hand side left hand side i am uh, I'm keep on uh, um, uh, having the same quantity in the left hand side so surface integral of e dot ds is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the volume integral of rho plus rho b for rho b i am substituting minus divergence of p rho b is the bound charge density which can be written as minus divergence of polarization vector that's what i am substituting in the equation 3 now i have a new equation which is equation number 4 now after getting the equation number 4 let us move further and i have a gauss divergence theorem according to the gauss divergence theorem the surface integral of e dot ds is equal to volume integral of divergence of e into dv it is surface integral of a vector is equal to volume integral of divergence of a vector while discussing the vector chapter in the first four units in the first four videos i have discussed this gauss divergence theorem okay it clearly says that the surface integral of a vector okay is equal to the volume integral of divergence of that vector okay so surface integral of e dot ds is equal to volume integral of divergence of e into dv so when you want to convert this surface integral of volume integral just you have to add div divergence you have to take divergence of that vector it is enough it will convert surface integral into volume integral now equation 4 becomes i have to substitute this gauss divergence theorem in our equation 3 and sorry equation 4 now the equation 4 becomes i have changed the left hand side this time so left hand side it, it was the surface integral of e dot ds now it becomes volume integral of divergence of e into dv okay so that is equal to right hand side will remain same it is 1 over epsilon naught volume integral of rho minus divergence of p into dv so this was the new equation i got next thing is multiplying the entire equation by the constant epsilon naught which is the permittivity of free space if i do multiply on both sides i have to write an epsilon naught here in the left hand side it's a volume integral of divergence of epsilon naught e into dv is equal to here in the right hand side epsilon naught cancels and it's a volume integral of rho minus divergence of p into dv right left hand side epsilon naught comes and the right hand side epsilon naught cancels 
now the thing is uh, let us uh, have some uh, I will take this P to the left hand side if I take P to left both are volume integrals I can take out the P to the left hand side so it's volume integral of divergence of epsilon naught E plus P into dv is equal to volume integral of rho dv now you know I am introducing a new quantity here epsilon naught e into e plus p is the quantity which I am calling it as displacement vector epsilon naught e plus p is the displacement vector therefore I am substituting d instead of epsilon naught e plus p now we have a volume integral of divergence of d into dv is equal to volume integral of rho dv so both side I have a volume integral I can equate the quantities which are inside the volume integral easily so therefore it is divergence of d is equal to rho I have got divergence of d is equal to rho where I defined the d as the displacement vector which is equal to epsilon naught e plus p I have told you in in the first first unit while discussing the first unit in the first 15 videos I have discussed about this displacement vector I have in detail discussed about the what actually this displacement vector is now let us understand what actually this displacement vector is the JD the displacement current is the rate of flow of displacement vector it's a rate of change of displacement vector rho d by do, rho t rho d by do, rho t is the displacement current j so displacement current is the rate of change of displacement vector this displacement current uh, it produces magnetic field as is as done by the real current real our convention current which, which is related to the flow of electric charges will produce a magnetic field exactly in a similar way this displacement current will also produce a magnetic field but this displacement current is not at all linked to the flow of charges here there will not be any flow of charges right this displacement makes the total current continuous across the discontinuities in the conduction current okay this displacement current is negligible in a good conductor as compared to the conduction current these are some of the features of the displacement current and displacement current density d is equal to epsilon naught e plus p so i finally i got the maxwell's equation as divergence of d which is a displacement vector is equal to rho this is one of the Maxwell equation let us call it as a Maxwell's first equation in fact that's a differential form if I have to establish an integral form of the Maxwell equation let us integrate this over a volume V integrate the equation which I got finally type dot D is equal to rho integrate this over a volume V so both side I am integrating over a volume V and I'll applying Gauss divergence theorem what it says so surface integral to volume integral surface integral of d dot ds is equal to volume integral of divergence of d into dv now in I have taking back I have volume integral to the surface integral now it was divergence I have removed the divergence I am writing surface integral of d dot ds is equal to volume integral of rho dv I am substituting this equation the Gauss divergence equation in the equation 5 so I got this surface integral instead of volume integral because I have substituted Gauss divergence theorem over there surface integral d dot ds is equal to volume integral of rho dv so volume integral of rho dv is a kind of total charge so this is the total charge enclosed in that surface which is enclosing the volume V so surface integral of D dot ds is equal to Q enclosed this is the integral form of Maxwell's first equation so I have a differential form of Maxwell's equation which says that dive dot D is equal to zero rho 
This is a more popular equation. We frequently use this. Dive dot D is equal to rho is the equation which we use more frequently than this integral form. We have an integral form here, okay, which is surface integral of D dot DS is equal to Q enclosed. That's an integral form of Maxwell's equation. We rather use differential form more frequently than this integral form of Maxwell's equation. If I have to say the physical significance of this equation, this particular Maxwell's equation, the net outward electric flux of displacement current through the surface enclosing the volume is equal to net charge contained within that region, within that flux. So this equation clearly tells you that the net outward electric flux of this displacement vector through the surface which I have considered enclosing the volume V is equal to the net charge contained in that surface. Another important point I can make out here is the lines of flux either entering or leaving the closed surface. Conventionally, the positive charge are sources from where the flux lines originate and negative charges are the where the, the lines of forces sinks, where flux lines terminate. Okay, So, in the positive charge, flux lines originate. In the negative charge, flux lines terminate. This is indirectly told by the first Maxwell's equation. Lines of flux either enter or leaves a closed surface. Conventionally, positive charges are the sources where the flux lines originate. Negative charges where the flux lines terminate. Hence, this equation will confirm a kind of confirmation that for the existence of positive and negative charges. This Maxwell's equation is a kind of confirmation for the existence of positive and the negative charges. So I have finished, I have done with the first Maxwell's equation. In fact, these Maxwell's equation are very, very important for the exam. Lot of applications are there of the, this Maxwell's equation. Do learn these Maxwell's equations. Uh, and you please learn the derivation of Maxwell's equation. Practice it. You will. Uh, you can. Uh, you can learn this equation. Very important for exam also. These are some of the books which I have referred. Uh, Griffith's Electrodynamics, a tough book, but it's a good book. And these two books are on to the syllabus, are exactly on dot. Okay. No extra things have been written in these books. So. So go through these books, you can understand these Maxwell's equation very well. Thank you very much.